What I do a lot of times between projects is I photograph the previous one. And I have since added some really cool backdrop stuff to my shop. And I get a lot of questions about how I photograph my work. And I've got a couple examples to show you. I'm gonna actually show you my setup over here so you can see what I actually do. And this is new to me. This is the first time I was able to do this. I just added that to the shop about six months ago. So what I've done, is I installed some photographic backdrops. These are paper backdrops, and you can see we have three rolls up there, which I have to be honest is overkill. But having never really done this before, I wasn't sure what background would work the best for me. So I got a white, I got a dark gray, and then I got a beige, right? And uh, it's actually a really cool system. If you look over here, I've got these chain-driven um, thingy mabobbers. That's actually what they're Pulleys. called. Yeah, it's sort of, pulley thingies. Uh, and this will actually allow me to retract and pull down the paper. Uh, the great thing about this is you put the backdrop down, doesn't matter what's behind it, it covers pretty much everything. You put your project, obviously the bigger it is, the harder it is to, to do this, but most of the stuff I build will fit within the confines of this size. Uh, put your subject here, and of course you need lighting. Like This is good, but you do need supplemental lighting to make this work. Okay, just those little... Um, Compact fluorescent deals, all right? And I shine those. Uh, here's the thing, if you want to get into photographic lighting, there's a lot of great resources out there and you can find out about like your basic three-point lighting techniques. Um, if I had the skill and ability and time, I probably would look into that type of thing. I know about it, uh, I just don't practice it. So I find that two decent lights will give me good results because the key is I just want results that look professional enough. I'm not trying to compete with a professional photographer here, I just want it to look decent. All right, so I have my two lights, casting light in both directions, create some nice shadows, and we get really good results with this. I, I also have larger um, box lights, uh, light boxes, that will cast a huge amount of light on the scene. Sometimes it's overkill for this, sometimes it's just right, you could dial them down a little, but they're big and bulky so I don't keep them in the shop. So this setup works really well for me. Now, the camera I use, is a Canon 60D. It's a really good camera, especially for someone like me who isn't really <laughs> all that into photography. Um, but I bought this when I wrote the book. Um, I needed quality photos at a level that I didn't ex you know, currently have the ability to take. So uh, this was a good compromise and has turned out to be a really good camera for me. And that's what I take my shots with. But I'm gonna show you some pictures that I took with my iPhone. And because of this setup, they're really darn good. It's kind of showing you that you don't necessarily have to invest $1,000 into a camera if you've already got one on your phone and your lighting situation is just right. Each one of those chain drives is $38. So if you can find a way, like even if you buy the brackets, the brackets themselves are $30. You don't have to have all three of them populated or you could just go find, look at them online and maybe make something of your own. It probably isn't too difficult. But 30 bucks for the hooks, um, $38 for one of the drives, and then your paper roll, depending on what you get. Uh, mine was about $65. So it's not that bad of an investment if it's something you're gonna use on every project and makes your work look like it's been professionally photographed. So this is the recent Gary Rogalski jewelry box project. All that was done is the setup you just saw, I laid the, the jewelry box on the ground toward the back and took a picture with my Canon camera. And I don't even know a whole lot about custom settings. I mean, a little bit of knowledge about using custom settings for your camera will go a long way. So you can get your focus right, you could, um, you know, stop using the flash, <laughs> things like that, and you can get really good results, all right? But this is an undoctored photo right off the camera using that setup. This is the Morris Chair Project, just recently completed. That one is doctored. And this is really the secret to a lot of my pictures. When I can't get perfect lighting, like right off the camera, uh, I have help, my good buddy, Funk, John Funk does some great Photoshop work. His wife does as well. Uh, one of them, I don't know who actually does it, but um, they do a lot of uh, post work on these pictures. Here is the same shot pre-Photoshop. So all he did was uh, remove some of the shadow lines, brighten things up, and also you notice I've got a little bit of background on that shot. Look to the left and to the right, where you could see to the outside extremities of the paper. Um, this actually, here's, let me go back to the Photoshop version. Boom. Cleans it up real nice, and like I said, good enough. I'm not looking for absolute, you know, this is gonna stand up to the best photographers out there. I don't need that. This is good enough for me to post on Facebook and for people to go, oh, ah, which is actually my ultimate goal in life. 
here's a shot, same setup with my Moorish chair using my iPhone. That doesn't look too bad, does it? And that's undoctored, by the way. That was just for test purposes. I wanted to take a picture to prove a point specifically for this to show you what it looks like uh, using, and not that the iPhone has a bad camera, the iPhone has a very good camera, um, but it's something that's along for the ride with my smartphone as opposed to you know, an $800, $900 camera um, that I invested in for the purposes of taking pictures for a book. You don't necessarily have to go through all this stuff, but if you want to, there's a great resource for lighting, and I use it for all of my lighting needs because it's incredibly budget friendly. Steve Kaser Lighting. I believe the guy's located in Southern California, and I will put the link directly to his site in the show notes. Uh, great lighting kits, great prices on big soft boxes, light boxes, and uh, little photographic kits like this. You can even get those little uh, tents that sort of open up, and it's a light box that you can shine the light in and take pictures of smaller items like that. 